By the time he got there, old poker face was wearing an uncharacteristic grimace, hanging on at the back of a group being driven by Jan Ulrich's telecom team. And having been given word that Armstrong was apparently struggling, they drove on all the faster. Now, this is the big team coming forward. These are the boys of Lance Armstrong. This is Rubiera right now with Armstrong in second position. They are accelerating. Is this, this is why they brought the climbers onto the US Postal Service team. They knew that Armstrong was strong in the mountains and put two big climbers alongside him. I don't believe I'm seeing this. Armstrong has been at the back for the whole day and Ulrich is in difficulty now. Well, I don't think Ulrich believes it either. Armstrong has given everybody, and maybe that was the plan to give everybody the impression, he was in trouble. And now Rubiera, who's looked after him all day, has put him at the front of Alcuez. A good reply there by Ulrich, and this is going to be a mano o mano now, and it's all happening before the climb has really started. And watch out, Kivalev is the man there in the coffee dish jersey. He's the man who also will be thinking about getting himself a yellow jersey before we go to the end of the mountain stages. Rubiera is doing the job that he was signed up for by US Postal Service and that is to be the pilot fish they've lost Kevin Livingston but now they've signed up two absolutely brilliant climbers Rubiera and Oroerto Heras Armstrong now for the first time today is looking comfortable he's come into his terrain Vinokurov boom he's out of the group right now Telecom are losing their men one after the other they are dropping like flies this is where you have to race alone and Armstrong's gone a big move by Lance this and no reply coming at all from Jan Ulrich Ulrich has got no answer to this acceleration by Lance Armstrong. So Armstrong has been holding everything under those legs till the last climb. And now he has launched the attack. He wants to win it out, do as we knew that. We were just not too sure he had it in him. He, has, he will thank Rubiera, who has completely sacrificed himself. He took a look straight into the eyes there of Jan Ulrich and said, well, here I go, are you coming or not? And the answer is not. This is what Armstrong was waiting for today. He's let Telecom ride on the front for the whole of the stage. He let them deaden their legs of all of the climbers except one. The one climber in this bike race is Lance Armstrong. If Ulrich had had any, fate, any eyes in behind those glasses, he would have seen Armstrong looking straight into them and saying, right, if you want to win this Tour de France, if you want to take it away from me, follow this wheel right now. You've got to be so strong, Phil, to attack from the front. He showed everybody where he was and just accelerated away. He's dancing now he'd said he wanted to win this stage at the Alpe d'Huez and this is going to cause serious problems it reminds me of Hotakam last year because on the way up to Hotakam there was a man off the front of the bike race his name was Ochoa this time it's a different name it's Laurent Roux and this man here thought he was going to win the Tour de France today Jan Ulrich but he's fighting Armstrong on his own terrain at the moment he's losing well, Ulrich is hurt here, he's going to have to hope he can recover a little bit and answer it later because he's got no answer right now. As we look here at the other riders who are being left, this is Beneteau, I think, and Francois. 5.30 is the official gap now as Rubiera, who launched uh, into orbit, his team captain, has now said, that's it for me, I'm just going to climb the Alp and hope that Lance makes it. Number one, well, you can't say more than that right now. Lance Armstrong is taking back time on everyone except uh, Laurent Roux. Look, Look at, at the this. gap of 4.40 already. Armstrong will contact Roux in the next two kilometres or so. Unbelievable. This has been done before by Lance Armstrong. I've watched him all day. I've never seen him ride at the pack, at the tail end of a pack as he did. It's a very dangerous thing to do. These are the men who want to follow him. There is Christophe Moreau, Jan Ulrich, Joseba Belocchi. These are the men who are expecting to climb well today. Roberto Lysseca is in there from Uscatel Uscadi. They couldn't follow the accelerations of the Texan. He has played a magnificent tactical maneuver today. He sat at the back of the group. He suffered in front of the television cameras because all the other team managers have televisions in the cars. They would have been talking to Ulrich all day and saying, oh, Armstrong's having a bad day. He has fooled everybody in the Tour de France. Well, by tomorrow, Kivalev will be about nine minutes ahead of him in the overall and probably in second place in the race. But remember that last year, in both time trials, Kivalev conceded three and a half minutes. There's another seven for us to look for. And, of course, the Pyrenees and tomorrow's time trial are still to come. Armstrong on course to climb from the depths of the Tour de France and win it again for the third time. This is Yoshiba Boloki, a show of defiance here by the rider who finished third overall last year. He's still got Ulrich in his sights. I don't think he'd catch him as we go further up the road by two minutes now to Lance Armstrong under the kilometre to go. Just this splendid journey across the town. 
ground where the crowd will just get a glimpse of this great rider and then cheer him home to the finish. Then the clock starts, then Lance will know what he's gained today. Well, if you stop the race right now, it'd be 1 minute and 55 seconds over Jan Ulrich, but Josiba Belocki is doing a magnificent comeback onto the wheel of the German. This man's style, Phil, from the bottom of this climb has not changed one iota. He's now getting into the big gears. It's the flatter part of the climb. Look at that. He's on the big chain ring right now. That will have 53 teeth on it, and he's putting the power in. He wants to open up as much time as he can over Ulrich. This is the Lance Armstrong we've seen in the past at Sestrier and at Hotekam. He's putting the pressure in, keeping the gap all of the time around about two minutes over his big challenger. And this is the speed. This is unbelievable. He's on the town square right now. He can breathe for a few moments as he negotiates this roundabout. And in a few moments' time, he will take a left-hand turn and face the final 400 metres. Look at his face. He wants this win. He dreamed about this win. He will now go up alongside the greats. And he's certainly setting himself up for a third win at the Tour. He is about to win his eighth stage at the Tour de France since he won at Verdun back in 1993. This will be the greatest win because it's Alpe d'Huez, the mecca of world cycling. That's the bend that Greg LeMond once almost overshot as he was riding to win the Tour de France. Now are we seeing the foundations of the man who will win the Tour for the third time in Paris? Lance Armstrong will probably say, yes, you are. Six hours and 23 minutes. He had to bridge a six-minute gap to win the stage he has given us a tremendous demonstration yes that's the one i wanted and i've got it